Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. A while back I had the privilege of going seeing Mike and Sherry Shipley with OCC Tools and uh, Dora. And we had the privilege of being in their shop and also in their home and, and interviewing them and recording some of uh, some fine folks that I've known all these years. And I hope that you enjoy the interview that we had with them. Hello, Mike. Hello. Good to see you. Hey, nice couple of workers coming in here. I put, I put you guys to <laughs> you work. Got, you got any jobs for us today? <laughs> oh, yeah. Always got a job. Oh, Mike, thank you for having us today. Well, you're welcome. This, I've been wanting to do this for a long time, and thank you for opening up your shop in the house, you and Sherry, and we're looking forward to spending a few few hours with you today, or maybe less, or whatever. But mm -hmm. uh, anyway, so we just wanted to, to learn and, and uh, talk to you about the history of your life. Mike, I want to start with you. Um, when was your, uh, when did you catch the carver's bug, I, they call it, you know? Well, I got thinking about that. It's way back earlier than we thought. I remember when I was a kid, yeah. I don't know, what, yeah, 10 years old, I don't know, but I wanted to carve a little man out of a flat board. I couldn't forget out how I'd get the shoes. It's, the shoes would have to stick straight out, you know, because yeah. there wasn't no thickness, you know. Yeah. I, Worked around with it with an old Dell pocket knife for a long time, but but actually, uh, we married in '76, and uh, we go like I said to Dog Patch a couple of times in uh, Branson, and boy, I'd watch them and I think, boy, I, I think I could do that, you know. Went to Branson once or uh, Dog Patch once, seen Harold and over down there, and we went again a year or two later. And he was gone, and I didn't get to see the little man carving it, but uh, dog patch. But uh, that's what really got me going. I guess probably right before we got married. I guess probably actually about '76 is when I really got started. Why don't you kind of show us through your shop here and uh, just kind of the, your day-by-day -day process? And uh, thank you again for having us. Well, this is a working shop, so it's a little dirty sometimes. That's okay. Uh, this is the finished end here. Sherry varnishes them, cleans them up, and puts a logo on them and ships them out. Down here is my end of things. This is where it all starts at. Yep. Now, how long how long have you been making tools now, Mike? Well, total about since about 06. So I took over Ron, Ke Ron, Ron Wells's, <coughs> then I bought Denny Newbauer's Outback Tools out in uh, 2011. Now, how did you come about knowing Ron Wells? Just seeing him carving at Silver Dollar City. Mm -hmm. In fact, I, I carved with him some, or quite a bit. And then uh, he had a heart attack, and he called me one night, and, before we hung up, I'd agreed to take over his business. I don't know what mm -hmm. I was thinking, but... <laughs> well, we're glad you did. Yeah. For, the, for those of us who still carve and love to carve, we, we, uh, your, your name will be out there for, mm -hmm. for many more years, Mike. And uh, so, so you, you and Ron uh, carved together down at Sodar City, is that right? Yeah. Now, both of you, you, uh, both of you kind of had the, the same style of carving, the flat plane, yep. the Ozark flat plane carving, we call it. That's what I describe it. I take pride in saying we're two of the mo most influential on that, I think. Mm -hmm. um, Ozark flat plane carving. Right. You know, you got the Scandinavian type, mm -hmm. uh, which is similar. But uh, we carved a lot of lock. And there's a little bit of competition. Ron was fast, and he'd do the same guy about six per day, you know. The same carving? The same carving. Per... I'd do the same amount, different pieces, you know. Uh-huh, right. And I remember at the end of the first day, was cleaning up, and he said to somebody, that guy's fast. <laughs> <laughs> and he's talking about you. <laughs> he's talking about me. And so what inspired you to, uh, why, why did you want to get into tool making? It is, I didn't want to, it just happened. It just happened. Mm -hmm. I didn't think I ever would, because I know all the work would be involved, but like Ron's just fell on my lap, mm -hmm. okay, and then uh, Denny's just fell on my lap too. He just asked me one day if I'd take over his, mm -hmm. his tool business, and uh, I agreed to, but uh, I wasn't looking for it, Right. you know. Right. Sometimes those are the best, yeah. sometimes. I think it's kind of meant to be. Yeah. 
Well, why don't you take us down into the, into the pit, I call yep, it. this is the pit. Because it reminds me of my milk barn in a way. When I used to milk cows, this was the pit where we had to go down a couple of levels to, yeah, this to get is to the, the cows. So. The old pit. In the pit, our blades are annealed. That means they hadn't been hardened yet. So I uh, put the initial grind at an angle. With this machine here? Yeah, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, the, and this one here. Mm -hmm. And uh, got a certain angle I go. And I grind a bevel on them. Not sharpened yet, but just a bevel. Right. Now you still do the, the, the what I call the Ozark flat plane blades, yeah. right? Yeah. That's what you and Ron uh, did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, the, that's the thing I follow ever since, you know. And it's still my favorite knife in the world. Yeah. You know, what I found out, what I liked about it was the flexibility of mm -hmm. the knife and also how long it stayed sharp without me having to buff it, you yeah. know. And that just shows that you're a master of what you do. But I mean, what really got me started about one cheap knife is like four or five dollars and a piece of wood and a, and a I guess the end of Harry Leno's book, first book. Mm -hmm. That's what got me started. And I thought, boy, I invested a lot of money in that, you know, worth <laughs> a few dollars. <laughs> but that, that got me going. That, that's what that's what got you started in the wood car. I didn't know what kind of wood to use. I tried cedar and everything else, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I always thought, got to thinking, something that occupied that much of my time, it, it needed to pay me. I need to pay some of it, you know. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I was struggling to make a living, you know. I had three kids and it's hard to make a living. But right. And I always had that in mind. I, was, I took things and I had goals set. I had things in stages. First, I wanted to get good enough actually sell some carvings at a craft show or something, you know. And then I, then I had to get good enough to sell some of the Branson, you know. Mm -hmm. And I finally got there, and that's kind of a rough start. Uh, uh, Harold Turpin was working mm -hmm. over there then. Oh, yeah. yes, yeah. Harold Turpin. And the guy that run the Silver Dollar City Carver's shop, uh, I can't think of his name now. Well, he really criticized my stuff right there in front of everybody, you know. Oh, my. And boy, I went home and determined I was going to, you know, be better different the next time. Yeah. It was, you know. Yeah. So, start selling a few. And so maybe that, that criticism, that even though it kind of hurt your pride a little bit, it can yeah. inspire you to, uh, yeah. to step it up. And, and yeah. Harold Herman was doing a shop there in Mutton Hollow. Yeah. And he had his own shop there. And I carried some of the stuff in there and showed it to him. And I guess he's busy. I was bothering him, you know. And uh, <laughs> he really criticized the nose or something on it. Said the nose is too big and it's too square. Uh, I limped home, you know. And, but I learned from that. And, you know, years later, about 20 years later, we got to run into Harold here and there, you know. And he was back to carving. He says, you know, I, I owe you an apology from a long time ago. I said, well, at the time I thought you did too, but I said, that was the best. You gave me the best advice I ever got. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he said, I love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Uh, you know, I learned from it. And then, yeah. Yeah. So this, this is the room where most of the ground of the work is done. Yep. Okay. Uh, we run through the forge, heat them up, and a uh, certain color mm -hmm. that gets the hardness going. Quench it real quick. That captures, that captures the hardness, sets it in the blade. And at that time, it's when it comes out of the forge, quench it and cools off. It, it's a little too brittle. Now, when you say quenching it, for those of us that are that are learning, how do you? I mean, what are you quenching in water like that? Or? No vegetable oil. It's oil. Okay. Okay. It's, right. uh, it's a cheap brand of vegetable oil. Okay. Okay. Of course, it breaks down after a while. I have to. Have to, have, have, to, have to do a little refill, have to you know. Refill once in a while. <laughs> All right, awesome. All right. Well, now let's take us up to the next uh, uh, process of, of the, your knife making. Okay. And so after we leave the pit, it, we come up here to the second part of the of the shop here. Yeah. Put these blades in the oven. Just a standard old old kitchen oven. Yep. Very old. Very old. <laughs> Was that one of your first ovens you all started with? That was our very first stove. Still going. Still going. 1976. 
My goodness. Wow. Yeah. And so when you get your blades, you put them on this screen here. You're using the bread rack here, I call it. Uh, and then you stick them in the oven. For a certain amount of time. Uh -huh. I won't say what it sure. is. Yeah, but uh, anyway, and then set a timer, take them out, let them cool, and put them together over here. Okay. And okay. you take them out of the oven and you bring them over here and you start putting them. On the glue bench. On the gluing bench. All right. Now, where do you get your wood for your handles at, Mike? Right here on the place. There you go. Now, I, I, I knew that, but I wouldn't want them to hear that. But uh, at least I hope it hadn't changed. <laughs> all the wood I use on us uh, from Famine Land right around here. And now we've got, uh, I've got a nephew who's got a couple of band mills. So it's sawed, sawed on the wow. place now. So. Boy, wasn't that handy. Now, how many, how many uh, styles of, of knives are you making now? Six to ten? or Six. How, six tools. Make a six now. Okay. In a good week with just us, I try to put out about 100 knives a week. 100 knives and a week. That's a lot things, of knives. Those things get in the way, you know. But uh, we used to do like 300 in a week. 300 a week. Wow. So whenever, it, whenever you get your knives, the handles put together here, then you dress them down? Mm -hmm. Just on a belt sander. Okay. Just, just sand them down into shape, shape and the size I want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're kind of... Ugly to start with, but uh, send them down to size that I want. And so when you get your, your, your handles shaped uh, to how you like it, and then where do we go from there? Uh, put the finished edge on them. Okay. Well, they'll, they'll look like this. Well, isn't that a beautiful knife? Man. See, it's, it's, it's not sharp enough to cut you, but right. the bevel is in. Yeah. And uh, I just put it. I just put an edge on it mm -hmm. and uh, try to stay as, as flat plain as I can, mm -hmm. you know. Yes. And, uh, Absolutely. Sharpen it, come over here. Sharpen it. Make some red compound with that. That puts a matte finish on the whole face of the blade. Now, I, I've got a question for you. I get, I get this asked to me, but I want, I want to talk to an expert. What's the difference between the greens and reds and white rouges that is used? What, what do you find works best far as just buffing your tool whenever you're sitting down, get ready well, to I've tried a lot of them, and uh, I use a greaseless compound. It's in a tube, hmm. and it's 80 grit, greaseless compound, and uh, that works real well. Just put, put face the wheel with it. But then I uh, use a white compound, and just polish the edge, make a few passes, and here's your white compound that you yep. use for that there, yeah. It's just a simple white yeah. compound. Yeah. And uh, now the darker compounds, like the black are, you know, dark colored. Mm -hmm. They're a little more aggressive. Okay. They're like this red compound, but I like the red compound better. It's so for those that are getting into carving and those who have been carving for a while, so wh when they're buffing their tools, uh, getting them ready to carve for the day, what what rouge would you recommend just for that, just for everyday buffing after they get their tool from you? White compound. White, white, white compound. White. Okay. On any kind of wheel, mm -hmm. and I, I tell people that all the time. You know. Now, when when people are setting up their shop, far as you know, their normal shop or garage or whatever, what should you go with a hard and a floppy di uh, disc type, or or just stick with one? Stick with one, a floppy. On knife blades, we'll grab your blade, mm -hmm. you know. But uh, for gouges, I did use a floppy mm -hmm. for years, you know, mm -hmm. just with white compound on it. Right, right. Just, just to touch it up, you know, if you're carving with it and it needs a little touch up. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. basically, what I understand from you is that you were, you basically was a self-taught carver. You never took a class ever maybe one or two down the years later maybe but just for kicks and greens yeah, never had, but to learn the craft itself it was just you and the bench knife and yeah. and and the coping saw to cut a saw out there yeah. you know mm -hmm. yeah that's i self taught myself mm -hmm. at that first book of harold's mm -hmm. so i'm standing on his shoulders yeah well a lot of us are yeah and a lot of us are standing on your shoulders too today mm -hmm. you know but it was hard of course nobody around here I didn't know about you at the time, or I don't know if you was carving or not, but, uh, you know, 
when nobody had talked to about carving. Yeah, you know? yeah that was. <laughs> I, know, I know the feeling. Yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah. crazy, you know. Yeah, yeah. Like, why would you want to do this when you could be doing this? You know. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I, you know, you you but love what you do. You know. Some carving was done way way back there, mm -hmm. just out of necessity, just making stuff to use on your farm. You know. Mm -hmm. Well, now I wanted to ask Sherry, where did she come in in all this? Did she, was, is she, was she a carver? Did she paint? Did, what did she do or, or no, whatever? She, she wouldn't, didn't, no. didn't like it at first because no. I was making a mess on the floor <laughs> and the girls were small, babies, you know. <laughs> and I'd be a carver instead of having them get her ready for bed yeah. or something, you know. Where's Mike? Huh? He's yeah. in the back room. <laughs> but that's, after I got selling some, you know, she finally like, oh, came hmm. around, you know. Might keep you around now, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just real nervous. Well, I've got a picture here somewhere of him carving in in the trash can in the living room, and John, I think it's Joni standing there watching him carve. Yeah. I, we've got a picture. She can barely walk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I can remember him telling me somewhere later on that. Like I was working, well, I'd worked outside of the home only like six years. I was staying home mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. And then I went to work at a Country Mart in West Plains in the deli. And I worked there for two or three years. And uh, Archie Daly owned the Crossroads store here yeah. <laughs> at door. And he said, why are you driving all the way out here to work? He said, come to work for me. So I did and worked there three years. And Mike's like, why are you working here? He said, just stay home and help me sell this stuff. So that's what we done. I started promoting Mike. <laughs> I've done a good I, job. Yeah, I, I, I started promoting him and promoting what he could do and booking our, trying to book a class. And mm -hmm. he didn't always want to get out there and talk and do it. No. <laughs> I'm the, I was the talker. <laughs> Yeah. I was the uh It was hard to Yeah. Oh I don't want oh I don't wanna I don't I don't wanna do that, but we're gonna do this. Yeah. <laughs> she put her foot down. Well <laughs> Well, I can tell you uh, you love what you do. I can tell that. Well you have to. Yeah. Yeah. You have to. And I, I know Sherry's a big part of this and we're gonna visit with her after a while and, mm -hmm. and get her 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 true story about all this. Yeah. <laughs> I could, I could not do it without her help, I I'll tell you. you know. I, I would say me and I all the time, but no, it's, it's I, we, you know. There you go, there you go. I know she's been your right hand on a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. You betcha. She's been through the whole ride. And she didn't pay me to say that either, so I just oh. want to let you know. I, I was going to ask her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i got to tease you a little bit, you know. Oh, yeah. But so let's go up to the last part of this, uh, of the of the packaging and kind of see uh, how Sherry does this and, and we can go from there. Yep. All right, so Sherry, would you mind showing us a little okay. bit what you um, do here? Well, I don't have anything to start oh, with. Oh, that's okay. But, that's but all right, just kind of. Well, it comes, it comes here. He'll bring a pan up that looks like this. Mm -hmm. And there's, so there's mm -hmm. nothing, he's, he's, it, it's sharp. Mm -hmm. It's ready to go, so it'll go over here. And I will put a, my first coat of varnish on it. Just put a coat of varnish on the handle, stick it in the hole and let it dry for a couple of hours. After that's done, then I take it back downstairs and lightly sand that first coat off. Just hmm. lightly sand it. Then I take it over here to this table and over here at this table, after I've got it lightly sanded, um, and uh, take the heating transfer tool here and turn it on and put the little put logo. The old, put the old hillbilly on there. Yeah. So this just goes, uh, take the heat transfer tool and put it on. And then it just uh, goes into the over here to the back to the varnishing table and gets its uh, second coat of varnish. And then I have to let it dry about an hour, hour and a half or so. And then I come down here to this end of the table and it's finished. And this is where I will 
clean them up. I, I check the blades because I'm not always real clean. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I check the blades for varnish, and then I'll pick up a piece of wood and and check the blade and make sure that it's you know got gets a good cut on it. Mm -hmm. You know, not leaving no marks or anything. Mm -hmm. And after I do that, get it all cleaned up. If the handle, the varnish will have a little, leave a little bit of roughness. If it does, I just take a little piece of sandpaper and just kind of lightly do that Press all the way around it, just to get a, a good feel mm -hmm. on the handle. Mm -hmm. And then I just uh, stick it in the tube like this, identify it for our customers. Mm -hmm. And just box it up and ship it out the door. And there we go. Yep. So my part is very simple to what Mike's. Right. <laughs> but it, it's part of it, though. It's part it's of part it. It's part of it. Right. She does all computer work and yeah. printing out uh, mailing labels and everything. So I can't do this. So as we kind of wind this down here, Mike and Sherry, again, thank you for letting me come. But what advice would you give to new carvers that are just, that's, just trying to get their foot in the door out here and, uh, and enjoying it. Just practice. Practice. But you, you've got you to set goals. And like I said, you've you got to carve every day. But uh, one thing really hindered me, but uh, if you can sketch, you know, a decent drawing, that really helps too. I've heard you say that a lot. But uh, I never could draw very good, but I would have it in my head what that piece is going to look like when I got it done. He couldn't, you know? he couldn't get it on the paper as, like it was in his head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To get it from here to here. Yeah. But he could get it from all here I, to the piece of wood. All I needed was a silhouette. Mm -hmm. and that's tough on a new carver, you know. Mm -hmm. I remember doing it too. You just don't know where to cut next, you know. What do I do next, you know? Mm -hmm. That's just a hump you have to get over, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I still get hung up on those humps, mm -hmm. you know, you know, still today. Do you yourself, Van, do you think about a new piece once in a while? Mm -hmm. Do you think well I had to have that to keep I me mean, going. Do you think, well, I need a new hillbilly or do you think, well, maybe he needs a cowboy hat? Right. Or, yeah, you know, I'm, do I'm, you think of that stuff oh, like I do. yourself? You know, and I'm like Mike, I, sometimes I can I can see it up here, but I can't get it to the paper. But I can sit there mm -hmm. and I can pretty much carve it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But for some reason, sometimes it takes me a while. Mm -hmm. Then like, okay, well, then I'll just kind of maybe make a rough sketch of it after I've got it carved, mm -hmm. you know, for a pattern for later on, mm -hmm. you know, but of course now there's just some of those guys out there, they can just, oh, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. and just, you know. I always wanted to do that, but I even bought books, you know, sketching books, how to, yeah. you know, yes. cartoon books. Yeah. And I always wanted to do that, but I, too busy carving. I just, just <laughs> you know, yeah. you know. Yeah. Well, you can't just do it once in a while. You've got to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you've yeah, got to just do it. You know? Absolutely. Just. Absolutely. Well, Mike and Sherry, we're going to uh, cut this off here, and thank you so much for having me, and uh, appreciate it so much. And you opened in your house and you shop to me, and. Uh, yeah, no problem. Glad to have you. Again, thank you for having me today, and and appreciate it so much. No problem. Appreciate it. Anytime. I hope that you enjoyed our interview with Mike and Sherry. It was a privilege to be in their home. And again, I want to say thank you to Mike and Sherry for having me. And folks, we'll see you real soon. Happy carving.